Welcome to the lab on VPNs. So we're going to be demonstrating both the global VPN, which is or client-based VPN, and site-to-site -site VPNs. We're going to be demonstrating both of those on the sonic wall to give you a, a more concrete idea as to how this all works. The, uh, the idea of this is not to give you the specifics to set it up on the sonic wall, but to give you a general understanding so that you could set this up on, a, on any firewall. So let's start with the global VPN, as SonicWall calls it, or the client-based VPN. So the first step would actually be to download that VPN client. You can download it right here from the, from, from the SonicWall website. You could download a 64-bit Windows version or a 32-bit Windows version. And then you would go ahead and install that onto the laptop that you wanted to access the client-based VPN. Then you go to the Sonic Wall, and this here, this WAN Group VPN, that's your client-based VPN. So first of all, you would need to enable that, but it's not going to it's not going to let you save it on the demo. But you enable that, and then you would go to the configuration. And this is the shared secret that they're going to have to enter uh, on the other side, you know, at the client end. They'd have to enter that to, uh, to get access to the VPN. You can use this one here. You can make your own. And then you have proposals. So essentially for the global VPN, you can pretty much use what's here. Or you might want to make it a little stronger. They give you triple des. I like uh, AES-256. It's a little stronger. So I would probably go with that, although it's probably not too important one way or another. Now, on the Advanced tab, probably want to enable NetBIOS, which allows the, uh, the Global VPN to make use of NetBIOS if, across the VPN if they need to, and also accept multiple proposals from clients. If you don't check this, you could sometimes you can end up with compatibility issues. And the last tab is the client tab. So this here never you generally want to that's the, the more the more secure method, you probably want to go with that. And then this allow connections too, you generally want to use split tunnels. If you choose this gateway only, it'll eliminate the laptops internet access. They'll only be able to get internet through the VPN. So unless you want that, which you're going to choose split tunnels. So once again, on the advanced tab, you notice that there's a group here called trusted users. So it requires authentication um, and they have to be in the trusted users group. So the last part of this would be to actually on the sonic wall, you would put that particular user into the trusted users group for all this to work. Now, that's a little beyond the scope of, of, of this lab to show you that, but that's relatively easy to do. That's really the end of the client-based VPN. That's how you would set it up. And now we'll go to the site-to-site -site VPN. So if you remember, a site-to-site -site VPN is from one office to another office. Any, uh, any workstation in, in Office A can connect with any workstation in Office B, and all of that will, be, will go through a VPN and be tunneled and encrypted. So the way you set up the site-to-site -site VPN is you come over here and you click on Add. And then you're going to set up these four tabs here. And they're going to pretty much be opposite on the other, on the other end. So in order to set this up, there would be a sonic wall on your end and then a sonic wall somewhere else in another city or across town or wherever. And you would set up a similar, you would set this up on their end also. So you can put any name that you like, and then this is going to be the, uh, the WAN IP address you're going to put of, of the remote location you'll, you'll put in here. And if you had, if you had two WAN IPs, you, you, would, you could enter it there. Then you have a sh some shared secret. So you're going to enter the same shared secret on both sonic walls. Enter whatever you like, but it should be strong. And if you go to the network, choose a local network. So if you choose a LAN primary subnet, 
Land primary subnet means that anything on, that's on your land will be able to talk on the VPN to the to the other side. You could tighten this down and make and only allow certain. Uh, workstations, but this is the generally u the most commonly used. And then here, you're going to enter the remote network. So you're going to create an address object uh, for that, and the and you're going to enter in the private IP address of the remote network here. So it's a little tricky. It's not the public, but the private goes in here. Then. Proposals, you can essentially choose whatever you want. The key here is that they need to be the same on both sonic walls on each end. Once again, I like to go with a little stronger a little stronger than triple des, but that's fine. And then you go to the advanced, and in general, you're going to enable the keep alive only on one side. Once again, you're going to enable NetBIOS. You, it, in case you need that, it's going to work. It can't hurt to, to put that in. So basically, you're going to set this up on each end of the, of the, you know, on the sonic wall on each end. And that's pretty much all you need to do. That should get you a site-to-site -site VPN up and running. Now, this doesn't actually let us see it because this demo version of, that we're on here doesn't let you save anything. But you would see the name, that, you'd see the, uh, the uh, number three here when you were uh, after you had set that up. That is the end of this lab. Thank you very much for watching.